Hello, and welcome to this interview question and answer series video. My name is Mike, and I'm one of the career advisors over at careerbuildingjobs.com. Today, we are going to talk about the common interview question, tell me about a time when you have had to make a decision using only limited information. This is not the most exciting of questions, I admit, but it does crop up quite a lot when interviewing for certain positions. This is because in an actual working environment, decisions often have to be made with incomplete data sets or under time constraints. And in such situations, your problem solving abilities and judgment come to the forefront. This type of question allows you to demonstrate your analytical skills and your ability to act decisively, even when you don't have all of the desired information. In this video, we'll first explore how to effectively structure your answer to this question. We'll delve into the common pitfalls to avoid when responding, ensuring you understand not just what to do, but also what not to do. Following that, we'll guide you on how to select the most appropriate example to enhance your answer. And then finally, we'll demonstrate all of these points with a real life example. If you're not bothered with the rest of the stuff and just want to jump directly to the example answer, there is a timestamp link that provided in the description below that will take you straight there. For those of you who prefer reading over watching a video, make sure to check out the description notes where you'll find a link to an article on our website that covers this exact interview question. Now let's begin with answer structure. These type of questions, often called competency-based questions, are all about sharing your experience with the interviewer. The interviewer wants to hear what you did, how you did it, and maybe most important of all, why you did it. In order to achieve this, your answer needs to be well structured. You need to ensure that you hit all the key points you, that you want the interviewer to hear in a logical order, while also avoiding the urge to ramble on. The best way to pull this off is by using the B star method. Using this technique, you will split your answer into five individual parts. The first is the B which stands for belief. You want to begin your response by sharing your thoughts and feelings regarding the subject matter. This helps set the stage for your answer and demonstrates your personal connection to the topic. If this doesn't make much sense to you, don't worry, there will be an example answer using this structure later in this video. Next up, we have S for situation. Briefly describe the context or background of the scenario in which your actions took place. This provides the interviewer with an understanding of the circumstances surrounding your experience. Remember, it's essential to keep this part concise as the primary focus should be on your actions and the results. Just give the interviewer the quick who, what, where, when and why. Following the situation, we have T for task. Explain your specific role and responsibilities in the situation. By doing this, you highlight what you were entrusted with in your previous roles and also lets the interviewer understand what expectations were made of you within the situation at hand. Up next, we have the most important section, and that is A for action, or activity if you prefer. Describe the steps you took to achieve the desired outcome and explain the rationale behind your actions. This part of your answer should be the most detailed as it illustrates your problem-solving abilities, relevant skills, and adaptability in handling challenges. And finally, we have R for the results. Conclude your response with the results of your actions using figures or quantifiable outcomes whenever possible. This will demonstrate to the interviewer the impact of your efforts and your ability to deliver tangible results in your role. This is also where you could share any lessons you learned from the experience. So now we know what the interviewer is looking for when asking this question. And we also know how we are going to structure our answer. The task now is to answer the question in a way that shows the interviewer that you are the candidate that ticks all of the boxes they are looking for. With this in mind, here are a few things that you should not do when answering this question. Firstly, saying that you don't make decisions on limited information. Effectively, you are rejecting the premise of the question. You might think this is a good approach to the question, you show the interviewer that you prepare for all eventualities and as such are never caught off guard, that you are able to make rational informed decisions every time. But that is not feasible. In the real world, there are a lot of unknowns. 
you will often have occasions where the information you require is unattainable for whatever reason. If you answer this question like this, then the interviewer will not be impressed with your thoroughness. No, the interviewer will think that you are inexperienced and naive and probably cocky as well, which is never good. Number two, avoid giving a generic or a vague answer. The question includes the phrase, tell me about the time for a reason. Interviewers want to hear specific examples, so avoid providing a response that lacks detail or doesn't showcase your actual actions or response. And finally, the third thing you should not say when answering this question is something along the lines of, in the end, I just went with my gut and it ended up being the correct decision. If you say this, the interviewer will think that you just got lucky, not that you have some heightened instincts for decision making in business. So we've explored how to construct our response, and we have also looked at pitfalls to avoid when answering this question. Next, let's delve into selecting the most effective example to use in our answer. Think about the following points when you are coming up with stories from your experience to tell the interviewer. First thing your answer should have is a positive outcome. Choose an example with a successful outcome. The result should showcase the benefits of your actions, such as improved efficiency, solve problems, or enhance team dynamics. This is not to say you can't have taken lessons away from the venture, and it is always good to talk about how you would improve upon your actions in the future. But the underlying situation should be resolved successfully when you are outlining your answer. The second thing your example should be is relevant to the job you are applying for. Choose an example that is closely related to the job you're applying for. An example that is from the same industry or sector would be the most preferable. And a good trick here would be to learn what upcoming work your new team has in the pipeline and use examples from your past that are relevant to that work. And finally, your examples should represent a challenge. Look for examples where you faced a significant challenge or problem and were able to resolve it effectively. But simply, you are trying to impress the interviewer. Make sure your example isn't some one-of-the-mill situation that anyone could have fixed. Pick an example that shows that only you had the skills or know-how available to get the job done. Now let's put together everything we have learned with an example. Once again, the question being answered is, tell me about a time when you've had to make a decision using only limited information. We're going to structure our answer using the B-star method as discussed earlier. Making decisions with limited information is a challenging yet inevitable part of professional life. There will often be times when the worst thing to do is make no decision. In such situations, I rely on my analytical skills and on drawing on past experiences to guide my decision making. At my previous job, there was a time when we faced an unexpected server outage that affected our main client services. The issue occurred after hours and we had minimal information about the cause. We had to act quickly to resolve the issue before it impacted our client's business operations. As the team lead, my responsibility was not only to coordinate the resolution efforts, but also to ensure minimal service disruption. I was expected to diagnose the problem, come up with a potential solution and communicate effectively with both my team and the client. With incomplete data on what caused the outage, I led a brainstorming session to identify the most probable causes based on our knowledge. Initial steps involved a quick analysis of recent system changes to identify possible triggers for the outage, quickly eliminating software and deployment issues to focus on the most likely culprits. By assigning team members to check hardware status and network connectivity, areas where their expertise could shine, we efficiently targeted potential problems. The decision to zero in on recent server configuration optimizations was driven by their proximity to the incident and the need for quick and resolute action to avoid extended service downtime. While the team were working on the technical aspects, I maintained open communication lines with our clients to manage their expectations and provide updates. This systematic approach paid off and we identified a configuration issue which we promptly fixed. The service was back online within two hours, preventing any significant disruption to our clients' operations. 
This incident led to the implementation of a new protocol for rapid response, which improved our preparedness for future emergencies. Throughout this experience, I learned the importance of leadership in crisis situations and the necessity of critical and analytical approach when facing problems with limited information. All right then, that wraps up our analysis of this interview question. I hope by watching this video, you'll be more prepared for this question the next time you are asked. Speaking of being prepared, are there any interview questions that you struggle with every time you are asked, regardless of how well you prepare? Drop a comment below with the question that's been giving you a hard time, and we will dedicate our very next video to breaking it down, and giving you the strategies to tackle it with confidence. Your input is invaluable, and together we can make your next interview your best one yet. And as always, if you like our videos, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And until next time, keep practicing, stay positive. Your dream job is just around the corner. Take care.